Yeah. Um, yeah, so where do we start today? <clears throat> this meeting is being recorded. Uh, we, I don't know, I'm gonna start with hello. How are you all? <laughs> Um, I, I did well. I literally just, I literally just put Tala uh, down to bed, so I'm just like trying to open my windows and everything. Don't, don't mind me. I just got this really cool uh, book. It's the Zero Edition. This is like hot off the press. Uh, How crypto can regenerate the world by the found. It's all about open source um, crypto. And I, I think that we should be. Um, anyways, it's uh, it's pretty, pretty good. I'm learning. It's kind of a hodgepodge of a lot of different ideas, but it has a lot of things. I think um, the git, the gitcoin. Do you know what gitcoin is, Martin? Haven't heard of that one yet, really. It's a it's a funding platform, and it's they do quadratic funding. Uh, which, to to be honest, I'm, as I was thinking about it, you know, we should be on there because we definitely, this is all about public goods. And uh, anyways, I don't want to diverge us too much, but it's kind of like, you know, there's there's $2.1 trillion in the value of the open source financial system as of January 2022 and I think that their very values aligned group is that the total value of cryptos altogether across the globe yeah mm -hmm. uh, but this group is this group in particular is I think like the mature crypto people that like are like they that this is kind of like the ethos and the values that they like wanting crypto to address. Uh, Do you know the people or who is that? I I tweet around uh, this guy, but I, I have a couple, I have a friend or two that are referenced in this book mm -hmm. and uh, they're giving, they do a lot of funding rounds. Um, it's called Gitcoin. Um, so you can, you could, there's, a, there's a pretty large online presence. So um, we could we could take this money that we're getting and put it into a Gitcoin matching, and maybe other people will match our project. Um, but I don't want to uh, distract us. Um, mm -hmm. but I guess, uh, yeah, um, where do we start? Let's start with the budget. Okay. Does somebody want to kind of screen share or? Um, let me make Marchin co-host. You know what I realized is that, uh, I don't know if this is kosher or not, but like, there's no budget for Jonathan in there, or myself. I don't know if you thought about that, or you need to be paid, or if I need to be paid. But we can handle yeah. that at the end. Um, it's kind of tied, I think, to what we were talking about with my comment on this doc. Um, like, I don't need an answer um, to continue helping out in any way I can. Um, yeah. I think my biggest fear, is, like, my biggest concern right now is overcommitment, uh, just because of, like, my wife being deployed and it has nothing to do with OSE. It's, it's like purely, uh, just, uh, practical consideration. So, um, 
that, that's where I stand. Yeah. Okay. Marching. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, the budget is bearable. As I, I mentioned one thing that, <laughs> like, when we talk about, like, for example, the production facility there, that's that's money for materials, really. Like, it, it, when it comes down to it, didn't really put budget in for actual labor. So that's that's one, one, uh, one thing. As far as any, yeah. Yep. Um, so yeah, this budget is is still actually lean. It's all about just ha hiring a bunch of people, getting stuff done. Um, so, but yeah, we could add whatever. I mean, Brian's kind of an authority. If if you're getting the money, you kind of can call some shots on some of that if that that succeeds. I'm I'm pretty bare minimum. I I hate to take away from anything else. Uh, I am uh, so let's let's figure that out at the end if there's any anything I think that uh, we'll figure it out but why don't we go through it and uh, if there's anything to talk through or we have it all figured out yeah yeah I know what to say so um I'm looking at myself. Um, as far as you guys see this, yeah, I mean, it's really, that's kind of. What, what exactly is being presented to the potential donor? Is it going to be like a prettier version of this document? Is it going to be a conversation and a document? Is it like a presentation? Like, I was going to do a prettier version of this document. Yeah. Okay. But, um, yeah. Is, is, is the plan to have Marchin like in the room explaining all of this stuff, or is the document supposed to stand on its own? I think it's supposed to stand on its own, and then we ha have a conversation. Yeah, okay. Okay, so now I have it open. Um, so, so, 10k to complete CAD and build instructions. Yeah, I mean, we, you answered some of my questions, and I didn't come back in. Um, I don't know if you guys, I don't know if it made sense what I was saying about staff. Um, which, like, which thing? You may pay someone fifty or sixty thousand dollars a year, and if they can cover, if you have one position that can cover a certain amount of things, then you don't have to pay. You right. know, it yeah. might mean that you don't have to pay so much money on all these little task by task things, and you're building right. team, and you're building capacity, which puts you in another level. Right. So I, I was just wondering if we're if we if we do this exercise with a, a few staff positions and some tasks, I mean you're not going to find it all through tasks, but maybe there's ways to group it into like a certain like let's say two roles plus some consultants. Could you? Would that be a way to consolidate some of the work, or is that not possible? I, it seems that there's there's of the diversity of activity here from physical building to to CAD to design to like curriculum development is that's like 10 different people so outside of hiring a bunch of different specialists to do those things I don't see how one person does it that's that's my first first uh, response it's the kind of perennial problem that we have we'd like to have one person that just sits down and, and is this magical operations manager that does does all these roles but it's beyond the scope of any single person that's the thing so then we'd pay for this that one person can do all of it i'm just saying that we can get chunks of it through one or two team members and then the rest is like so can't what's you like what specifically then <clears throat> i can, can i give you an example of how i think this could look potentially yeah, I mean, um, yeah. 
if you, if you take Richard Henniger and Brian, are you following any of the conversations with Richard? He's he's a veteran who I was connected to, who is very ex- he's finishing his undergrad this summer and is very excited to come out. And his attitude is essentially, like, I don't care what I'll shovel shit, I'll build stuff. Just like I want to be a part of this, right? So, um, so somebody like him, like he he's probably not super useful on highly technical. Uh, exacting tasks but he's something he can be accountable for workshop organization like a lot of the initial steps that you're going to have to take to you know ter- convert the hab lab or whatever else and he has the ex- the experience to manage three or four people under him mm-hmm. if he has to or or task masters and even like even if it's and he'll come cheap relative to like a a certified project manager or operations specialist or whatever. And so like one possible scenario is you just dedicate a chunk of money so that he can survive out there on the farm and like own a piece of the, the, the operations process and just have another beating heart that you can delegate stuff to, um, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. given, given all the unknowns. So like that, that's a potential, right? And I don't know what his reservation price is for, leaving Virginia and coming out as soon as he graduates but the last I spoke to him the only thing pulling him or like complicating the matter is like he had a teaching gig offer right and I think whatever money you invest if it's not Richard whoever like whatever money you invest in that position now is going to become hopefully embedded even more as the organization grows and so it's like a worthwhile investment so that that's kind of what i'm thinking of as Mm -hmm. the most feasible realistic scenario right and that doesn't track from the kinds of budgets like to build that infrastructure like all those costs are still there but we can perhaps take away some of the items here because this is like a lot of a lot of things were thrown into this proposal but maybe take out some of the stuff take out web stuff put in on the ground stuff infrastructure. So a person like Richard. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I think you you implicitly uh, it, like built this in an, in a priority list. Like you're finishing the product, and then you're creating right. the infrastructure before like. And so you know one one potential way to articulate this to the donor and think about it yourself is here's our wish list. If we run out of budget and I it turns out that I have to find the human and pay them. I'm just going to take the from the pot I've dedicated to the least to the game development, right? Or the like the least priority item on this current list, and just reallocate it to to the thing that's critical right now. Um, because, like you said, this is really this has not really been done before. Um, and I, yeah, so so I like you you. You may not need to have a number right now for how much you have to pay a, a Richard or somebody, a couple people like him to help you implement. But mm-hmm. like, if you have 500k and you're only dedicating like 50 to the product initially, then you can kind of figure that out as you go. Accepting, you know, you're just sacrificing the game development and the stuff that's not as important to you right now. Right. Uh, we can, um, you know, we want a website for the product, but even if I, you know, like <laughs> throw it up on an existing website and, you know, a few pages, like all that stuff we can eliminate and just do bare bones. Thing is, uh, I think the, the main, main thing is, yeah, yeah. I mean, we could basically. A, okay. So there's a, in structure of videos is 40K and the website is 30K. That's, yeah. that's, no, that's reasonable. Yeah. And that, yeah, then you do with what you have for less than that, right? You can uh, get someone on Fiverr to do it for $5. It won't be that good, <laughs> but it will be there. It's literally like the, yeah. the whole range from 0 to 100 on, on those numbers. And here it's like uh, like the 100 level, but the 100, it's really like 50% level. Because like, as I mentioned in the production facility, like if we have 150K for this full facility, that's 3,000 square feet, solar production facility like we didn't really consider uh, how we're going to build that those costs are not really you know which which assumes that okay we'll take some of that 150k and do it for put some of that into labor as much as we can right so that's um, not let's say that you're the construction manager on that that will you can't 
you can't cover that with 150. That's just the materials. No, that would be like just the materials. I mean, this is a, if it's going to be a year round workshop, I mean, that's a low cost for a 3,000 square foot facility. Same thing on the kitchen and the housing? Yeah. So I think you got to choose which one you want for this first. I mean, so the I'm, idea is to have a new. We got to make the kits and the, and the facility. That's we need that because uh, the existing workshop is. It's all about quality of life. There, it's like we can't possibly do it in an existing workshop, but we. It's like it's not efficient. It's not optimized. So it's like wasting time. If we added in, how much is? What is the number to add in for labor for these? Just so we have a sense. I mean, in a, unless we're absolutely scrounging, the industry standard is typically half materials and half labor, if we're going by industry standards. And then we can try to cut corners, but every time you try to cut corners, you get delays or maybe not not the right well, I meant, I mean, like, the worst case... I put another number here, 150 plus what for labor? 75? Yeah. I'm just looking for a number. Yeah, so that's, that's a, that's that a reasonable... Be, that's reasonable. So that it, would be... Go ahead, Jonathan. I, I don't want to derail this, but I may have missed something, which is, like, we kind of glossed over the revenue-producing aspect of some of this. So, like, right. it, in other words, there's a bare minimum life support required to get human beings on site to be willing to pay to do shit. And you've already proven that people are willing to come out and, and do shit. So, like, to me, the question is, like, what's the limit of, like, the bare minimum infrastructure investment we need to in, in, incentivize people to come out and build shit what once we hit that point margin already has ideas for using those that the swarm build model to, to produce, create the labor to or provide the labor and revenue to build yeah. stuff um and i just want to make sure like that is that still on the table or are we sort of wargaming a broader you know no, the idea is uh, the infra the question is to clarify what's the investment required to attract and keep people for a successful program. Once the program starts, we have a six month delay until we're we're like fully up and running, getting revenue. But literally, it's like I would go about here's a two week crash course. We're building a real house like two weeks into the program, like starting on a real build, and that means some revenue coming in or like a month or two you know and then but then what's required for the program well we need some curriculum we need some facilities we need, the housing is is our our latest thought is this is your immersion we build a bunch of these uh, small homes as part of the training so, so you're right. you know, you're living in these things uh, we can possibly I think probably like house eight people in Hab Lab initially we wanted to convert it to a kitchen, to a kitchen and a community space. Uh, so there, I mean, there's many ways, to, many ways to go. Um, Can I ask you a question? One uh, B and three A. Could that be consolidated? I know they're different work streams, but that's seventy K on. Um, kind of like what I would say the teaching and curriculum that's my role and get that out of there I mean I I would want some assistance on that but I mean I, I was planning on okay spend some good solid time just organize I mean we've got so much stuff on the wiki it's about organizing it to the best best way I certainly feel comfortable just going out there given that I'm the author of a lot of this stuff is you know just presenting but the question is the quality of that education. You want you want it to be a little higher, but um, but the what is the one B is different though. And the one B, yeah, it's That's different 70K. because collaboration infrastructure is things like 
how do you actually collaborate, whereas the, the three A is the actual product of it? So there, there are different aspects. One is how do you actually work together? So how do you do CAD? Where do you put your documents? How do you use templates? <laughs> All the skills of collaborative design, uh, which that is more for the product side where we're saying, OK, if we're going to be building different versions of that, of the house, then we need people designing that. But we, might as, we can as well, if we get rid of 1B, what do we have still? We still have the Rosebud model, and that's just put a red line through that, and we're still selling Rosebuds. And maybe we're not developing new house models. So I was just thinking for 50K, I was thinking for 50K, I think we can get some of that collaborative infrastructure as well. Yeah. No, it's true. It's true. It's, I um, think that we can get some money there. Because you already have, on A, $10,000 for build instructions and CAD. And then the swarm build is another 10 k for that how to do a swarm build. Um, yeah, we can, we so can get rid of that. That's, that's, that's that, the enterprise side. If you wanted to start having people looking at this with interest of actual enterprise replication. But no, that's not really necessary. I see it as this is what we eventually will have, but maybe that's, um, but we can easily say right now is not the time when we produce this. We'll, we'll produce this with the revenue. But I think that we can still get it. Like if I were hiring a, con a company to take everything in the wiki, I would have them do both of this stuff for 50K. And how much time is that you you thinking? How much time is it? I just think it's, I think it's a negotiation on a project by a project basis, not time. That's what I would do. Mm -hmm. Um. So we can let's just try. Because yeah. it to me, for you, it's a different bucket, but for me, it's similar you know it's yeah. similar enough where like that 50k spend could get you there could be two objectives you know yeah one is the the design or how would you describe that uh you know build how to and there's another i think that this is just complete cad not the build and i mean i guess it's build constructions that that's another 10k that we could have the same people doing yeah. so that's 60k yeah so there's really three build how to uh the second thing uh we would say student digestible the second would be the collaboration infrastructure and the third would be uh complete cad yeah. Probably not in that order. Yeah, sure. So that's, in a way, that's 60K that we have for that. Um, now, if you're going to change the, if you're going to change the Hab Lab into a, a community center, would it also be the kitchen? Yeah, it will be the kitchen. Yep. So would that cost seventy five K to turn that into a kitchen only? Uh that you know, for that kitchen dining facility I was actually thinking before speaking to Katarina about a, like a separate facility, but but to do um if you were gonna retrofit that to a kitchen, you do want some equipment like chillers or something, some equipment, but I don't think fifty K half of that. But this is really I would say what you have here is it sounds like this is really the next level factory, right? You've got you've got now how many people could you accommodate? Well, the idea here for this level of, of infrastructure was to to accommodate 24 full-time people. So in each unit, there would be two people? 
Um, that's that was assuming that we're, by the time we do this, we'll, no, I was just not including the adult, the full cost of it. I was I would budget twenty four times twelve, but initially we could put like eight people into the hab lab, and I don't know where the money's going to come back. So it's it's like, no, it's not really saying the uh, the real cost. I think would be twelve times twenty. Uh, sorry, ten times twenty four. Um, I mean that's what I think. I think that's what you need if you if you each person has privacy. They have a single room, so that's the, that's the kind of level we're talking about. So, so we need to we need to talk about. So this is new infrastructure. We need another one that's saying like conf current infrastructure, like C. And we need to talk about the Hab Lab, and we need to talk about. So Hab Lab can get eight people. Yeah, the outside rooms doubles. I, I, that's good for like not permanent though. So so we want to build more housing as soon as we get the revenue for it. Right. This is existing infrastructure. Uh, so Hab Lab turns into kitchen. Yeah, kitchen and community space. Which is so you would have two kitchens? No, no, that's no. That would be enough if we got a kitchen there. No, that would be for twenty-four people at least. Now that kitchen dining facility, what I was thinking about that, that would be like more a larger scale, the outdoor one where you can do way more than twenty-four people. So you're probably going to need two anyways. Like, so you turn that into a kitchen. That means that you also have to build. 12 more units, right? Uh, That's 24 people. Yeah, that would be... That would, yeah, I would put that down later. But it could be in here. Well, I was just trying to understand, like, what you're doing. Like, what is the site plan, essentially? Yeah, the, yeah, the milestone of 24 people full-time. So, so people not really in a, in a hab lab, um, I would say... Each person has their individual room. Like part of that, why you're building that, your own micro house is that you get really, you know, you dive right into the construction methods with a real stake in it because it's actually your house. So we thought that's a great idea, both education and infrastructure purposes at the same time. I have an idea how we can increase accommodation capacity at a cheaper cost. If you're interested. How's that? Well. The the only the I'd say the downside is they're not building their own homes. But what we have <laughs> is um, we put out like when I'm looking at buying an RV uh, site or like a I've looked at a couple of different farms to buy and making them into kind of like my my biggest question is always like how many people can you accommodate? Let's say you want to have an open source festival. How many people could actually stay on the property? So I start with the lowest level of accommodation is camping. Typically what you need for camping is just a flat surface and the, the gear. So in, a, in theory, we could, for that lowest level, we could have like different tiers of accommodation. Mm -hmm. You know, people pay for different tiers. And the lowest level would be like, I don't know, it's like a, a wooden slab with like a little bit of, I, I'll look at my old files, I can do it in a second. But there's a, some amenities on the slab, you know, maybe like a barbecue and like a chair and whatever. The next level up is glamping. So it's just a, a nicer tent. Those things are $10,000 a pop. How many people? And one to two. Uh, typically one, unless it's a couple, it would be two. Yeah. Um, and then, and then it would be the cabin. But and you're already you at the cost of what we're planning on for the individual cabin, and a cabin is a pretty decent space with insulation and heat. Actually, so we're. Well, you're doing ten. I'm I'm close, but eight k for a glamping. I I, I see what you're saying, but. Uh, the 10K is actually a permanent structure, like a permanent year-round thing. Is your thing for year-round too? Because that's you got to consider the winter. 
That's true. Yeah. Yeah, mine would be uh, – but, you know, it would be good in general just to have your ability to kind of swarm out yeah. your accommodation, at least with the camping. But, yeah, maybe – Maybe well, it's just out, man. I, I don't think why why the campground is not not sufficient because I mean people have always done that when you have fifty people, you know, maybe there's a bunch of people camping. So in the summer, that's not a problem, but it's, it is a problem in the in the winter, of course. Yeah. Okay. Well. Yeah. It would. It would be. You'd have to have an on season and off season for that. Yeah. Unfortunately, there, unless you put heaters in or you found some way to do it yourself. There's a um, there's a model for this. Uh, miss, this guy he calls himself Mr. Chickadee has a timber framing like week long seminar in October or November, um, and, and people come out and, and they camp and they work during the day. So like the camping model can't work, and they pay him to go do this. Um, but. I don't know. I think we should just keep in mind that like whatever the solution is initially, it's not the permanent solution. Like like right now, the immediate prop barrier is we just need a faci- we need to be able to house the minimum number of people to get this thing started, which I think is 24. Right? Like it's not the full apprenticeship. It's not the fully functional factory. Before we get to any of that, we need to figure out how to turn 500k. So into, I'm only counting you know, 20 people accommodation. Whatever the number is, I mean, I bring it up to twenty-four. Like whatever the number is, I mean, I, it's not going to be the, even if it is twenty-four, it's not going to be the full, you know, two-year fully fleshed-out experience for five hundred k. Yeah, I would. I think we should start with that, and then scale back to the five hundred, and then get other people to fill in the total amount. Like, what do we really want to build on this property? Like, okay, straight up, and then scale it back, because you start building stuff that you don't really want, and it's just like that's mm-hmm. that's not useful. In that case, like March, I don't know if this is still a part of your plan, but there was a significant chunk of the cost was like grading, reorganizing the bone yard, or creating like a a scrap yard. That's organized and um, I don't know. Grading is part of this. Uh, earthworks and grading are okay. part of this. The way we can do the houses with less grading is doing post and beam, which we we're talking about here, because uh, then you just need an auger for that. It's easier on a grading. But yeah. I think those costs we were talking about before, it's still there because if you're gonna have 24 people, you're gonna have those infrastructure needs. Yeah. So how do we get this to where we can accommodate 24 people? Because right now I'm only counting 20. Well, I'll just add but, add the cabins. Like if if we're assuming this, uh, I'm a, I'm assuming that we're starting an apprenticeship with the 24 people. So this you is. You have eight people in Hab Lab, and then you have cabins, right? Yeah, then then put the rest in cabins. Okay, so remind me again how many cabins you have. Well, then eight plus sixteen. But you have two cabins. Right now. Yeah. Yeah, but those aren't. Those won't be suitable for year round. We need to build 24 cabins. We need to build like 20 for 24 people. But what about the existing infrastructure? Are you just going to forget about that? One is a faculty house. One is the other one is the the micro house. Those are still good. It's probably uh, one of the support staff or something. Those I mean those are available. Um but there's probably going to be some support staff on site. Oh, so you're reserving them for support staff. Yeah. You have the faculty house, you have the other house, and then you also have the house you just finished, right? Yeah, the finished house would be, um, that That would be our show house. We'll probably have, I'm not sure if someone's going to be living in there. It would be more like this is our demo house for when doing house tours, like on a monthly basis or something. 
You could you could make one of them the faculty house, make the show house the faculty house, and then you can have the current faculty house. You could put a couple people in there. Yeah, I'm just trying to get you to 24 without increasing the budget, you know, that much. Yeah, I mean, it depends how we think about it, what, what this budget is covering. We can as well say, no, well, that's not covering the rest, and it will make it do somehow. Hey, don't we right. want 24 in the long run, though? Yeah, we do. That's right. You do? Okay. Yeah, we do. So then we just add in... That's, I think uh, the idea of you living in a house that you've built and you're proud of, that's a, that's a real uh, it's a good uh, incentive. For people but to what do you around. do until the house is built? Like, yeah. So this is what I was talking camping. about with like, yeah. There's some Probably there's some camp. like bare minimum life support upgrade either to the hab lab or something else to get the first cohort in for like a swarm build two weeks something that produces the cabin. Yeah. So what I'm so thinking like, there, like, there's like eight people in the hab lab, so double rooms outside there, and even the inner room. So there's like twelve total. And the rest of the people are camping and using the faculty house or the other house, whatever's available. The cabins, there's a bunch of stuff around, and the rest throw up t tents. And the idea is to build, uh, what would it be? And now? the people with the lowest level of com accommodations get the house first. <laughs> it would be 14 yeah. units? 24 at the end of the day. So we wanna, I think we want to get to those 24 like a ASAP. Now, each of those bills Wait, is will it, be... Is it 16 or 14? Eventually 24. So the logic... I know, but... Um, see, the logic there is it's excellent practice for building a CD go home. The techniques are going to be the same because we're going to use the similar, same kind of modules. So you're getting like all this back, back to back study on building a real house, like up front as soon as you get there. And you're, you're also doing your accommodations at the same time. So I think that's that's doable. That's like a level of pain you can suffer, and but then you got a house. And each of these would be, I mean, I'm talking about each of these micro houses would be like a day or two each. If you have the foundation, meaning like the maybe the the posts already dug or like the posts prepared, like to do all that framing. I mean, that, those little units. I mean, we're thinking between 144 so and 256 people. square feet each. We're going to pay people and train them to build houses on the property. That's going to be like a special offer. There could be different ways to do it, right? Right now, the, the, like if I think of a replicable program, I would say in a self-bootstrapping program, the tuition actually goes for where, where that goes into the materials for the house that you live in, if this is to scale like um, to, to any number of people. Otherwise, we can't scale this. Like I'm talking about scaling this worldwide to thousands of potential facilities everywhere. Like, I think I'm of the opinion that if, if you offer a good education program, and part of it is you build your own house, that definitely qualifies for the education, the value of that education. It's not slave labor to you. It's, it's your education. And then so everyone's building the micro home and not the C to eco home, essentially? And well, well, the, the micro, micro house for their for their accommodations and that, that might happen for the first two months or three months after that we're going out into the field or something like that and building real CD go homes how long will it take them to build this house I'm saying one or two days if there's 24 people I shouldn't it shouldn't take a day for a single house and that'll be one of those things where you're really taking advantage of the swarming ability how many square foot I mean small it's like uh, Say that around 200 square feet. And what does it have in there? Is it just a box? It would have, we're talking of even bathroom. So we'd be connected to a common sewer. And that's, that's why the waste processing facility. So I want this, I want this facility to be recycling its, its, uh, its waste. So that means that goes to agriculture at the end. So there's your pump station, and if this is going down, so I'm thinking that here's a regular sewer like you have down a city street, everyone feeds into that, and then the downstairs is either a digester or a pump system that sends it to another area where that's used as septic fertigation. Yeah. So 
So, we're, I mean, we're, we're looking at, we're actually looking at that bathroom being in there. Now, the kitchen would be common, but the bathroom, yeah, actually in the, in the individual units. Any ideas to convert the hab lag also to a second kitchen? Well, right now we're saying like that's the only kitchen we would need for now. Right. But whenever you do that, how much does that cost? I think 25K would be fine. Uh, gut the inside, take out the inner wall, make it a big common space. It used to be that way. It used to be a big common space, then we put it in an interior wall. Uh, we would want to take that out, perhaps put a library, you know, like a library space in there. Probably take out one wall to expand the, the bathroom area or the kitchen area. There's a bathroom in there too, could be used. But yeah, do some in, interior trim with a chainsaw. <laughs> Uh, well, one thing I don't, I, I'm not sure if this is factored in, uh, waste, solid waste, like trash. Not really accounted for, but, but um, we'd, ha we'd have to do, I want to do the, eventually it's shredder, you got biomass, plastic goes to the 3D printers, metal goes to recycling, but we're not there yet. Immediately it's like, I don't know. Well, you've already got a truck burner. with a trailer, so you could make runs to the landfill, right? Well, we, a lot of it can be recycled as in there's a recycling center, yeah. And the rest would be compost, and the rest is burn right. barrel. Got it. So let's... Can I turn this into a uh, Excel sheet? Yeah. <laughs> okay. You're speaking oh. of my heart. <laughs> What do we call this thing? OSE upgrade? Core Enterprise Infrastructure. What do you call it? Core Enterprise Infrastructure. So I'm looking at this thing when it's cranking, it's 1.2 million net per year. Um, building 50 houses. No, 24 houses per year. 24 houses at 50K net per house. So it's our core model. Uh, this is kind of the focus. It's like, let's show this thing that it works and can be replicated. I think that we have to make that case in this document. Yeah, I emphasize that we're trying to develop a scalable revenue model that can fund any kind of a progressive project. That's kind of the idea. It's been like that all the time. Because there's too much good work to be done, and, and instead of doing this kind of stuff, people got to get do their jobs. So it's part of this like wor workforce redevelopment on a grand scale. You've already proven that people are willing to pay you to come out for this experience. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's true, and that's why it's there's a great hint of a viable mechanism there. Yeah. Do you have those projections somewhere? Yeah, on the wiki it's called Core Enterprise Model. <clears throat> okay. Let me put on the link. Core Enterprise Module. It's not a model. It's a module because it's a module intended to be scaled. Um, so look at the executive sum summary there. Yeah. Um, chat, I put it in a chat box in, in Zoom. Okay. Uh, I need to. So, what do we go from here? I feel like we kind of, I don't know what all these numbers add up to, <laughs> but that's why I wanted to put it into an Excel. I can share that with you. Uh, edit.
I just shared. So we have product. Oops. This is description. I'm just doing like the first one. I don't know how fast can we do it together if we're swarming it. Oh, fuck. I'm just going to put... I think there should be another. Should be like product up here, then like house website, then swarm. Build swarm swarm of operations anyway. And that is ten thousand. Like that. <clears throat> something that really bugs me is that if this was like a traditional tech startup or something like it would be it would make sense on the merits of just the product but like on top of that there's everything else that this does to be like self efficient or self sustaining and replicable and it's almost harder to get funding as a result of that it seems to me i don't know maybe i'm just missing something no that's, that's no, no shit, shit. yeah <laughs> <laughs> like you like you could you could go pitch this to some vc and ask for you know a three million dollar seed or something like that and you'd be giving up equity but like you probably get it just based on all the work that you've already done. Yeah. But the fact the fact that you're trying to take a unique unique pathway that touches on so much other shit, like would seems kind of backwards to me. Yeah. No, it's true. It's um we do have a lot of work put into this. I, I think the good thing right now is uh, with some basic infrastructure uh, we'll get to the, I mean, to, to get to that million dollar revenue model takes some time and effort. That's where people get typically the VC funding. Now here we've done a lot of work over the years to do get there, but there's no, no denying that, I mean, even this budget is like, okay, it's like a million bucks, it's like a regular startup kind of deal. But it would really be, if you put in all the costs, it would be more because we already put in a bunch of work. Mm -hmm. Now, as far as fungible by other people, like if, I mean, there's gotta be some way to do, like instead of the equity part, just some loans, some loan kind of scenario. When I'm thinking for um, some kind of line, line of credit or, or business loan, we have to figure out some way to fund this kind of stuff outside of like yeah. DC where, where it's just like equity. Don't you think this is natural for the crypto world? Yeah, yeah. There's like. DAOs every day. I mean, why don't you just create a DAO? Yeah. I'm just kind of. Uh, yeah, it's, I mean, that's one of the opportunities. It's, you know, one of many things that can be done, yeah. I can get a promo video for. That's a good price for it. Two I'm just taking the descriptions and putting them in the description. Let's see. So we're at 875. Um, 
I guess the so what can we delay? Can delay the student housing because that was supposed to, or delay half of that because that's supposed to come out of tuition or out of revenue. Okay. So let's do that. So we have a 24 units, but this is only cost plus labor for 12, since the rest will yeah. come from two. I mean, we could do. So is that? That's three. Cut that. What to 180? You want? Should we do that? Was well, that the right number? Yeah. Yeah, tw twelve at ten thousand each. Plus. So this is a uh, building, one to two. So one to two. Let's call it a two-day build for two hundred square foot micro house with bath bathroom. Uh, so this is a new, I don't know, you don't need to say anything. What wastewater treatment? You don't need to say anything more than that. But we didn't put the number there. Yeah, we didn't even do that. That's 75. And then the truck is technically new infrastructure, so I'm going to put that in the one above it. Okay. So, is is this teaching a curriculum? Are you thinking about that for the full apprenticeship, or is this um, something earlier, like an intermediary? For right now, it's like that. That's what's got to be done to a high quality. Eventually, for right now, uh, that could be safe for later. Would you just want to hire once, one person to do that? That's a year's worth of salary. Yeah, if, yeah. If we could find somebody to do that, yeah. So a technical writer who's also a, an instructional writer who's also a builder. That's that's. Uh, <laughs> Designer, builder. Designer, builder, and technical writer, or construction designer, like an architect. Yeah, except architects don't build. So it has so, to be a, a, a designer builder, design builder documenter. It's a design build technical writer, designer builder technical writer. It's three roles in one. Every time you add a role, it's much harder to recruit somebody. So what is this testing in? Yeah, so this is, uh, that's like, in the program itself, this is just to specify, that's just paperwork that's gotta be done. I mean, that, what's, it's like a, it's a, we're a school, we're gonna have to have tests and certifications. So we have to define all those. Recruiting and hiring teaching assistants. You can reduce that to five dollars if you say, "Here's uh, the forty-eight modules of the house. 
your test is to build one and document it with a video. That's your that's our entire testing and certification infrastructure. So we can take it out? Yeah. That could be done later. Uh, he took out teaching assistant, recruiting TAs, not testing and certification. That's what I thought you said. Uh, teaching assistants should stay. Oh. I think you do need the money for the testing. Because I think if you make it a cool experience and you make that serious, it adds credibility. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, it's going to have to be done at some point. Yeah. Okay. I think the question is right now what looks like a like a reasonable proposal because it's like that's that's all. Well, um, we're at seven seventy, but I think this is this is bare bones, isn't it? Yeah. It is. It's still, for what we're trying to do, is still very bare bones. But why don't we get him to, if he can put in 500, then we'll try and find another person to do 270. Yeah. Or we'll do quadratic phoning on Bitcoin for the rest. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, I'll tell you, you know, what I... What I would typically do, I mean, when I'm writing up a quick proposal, I would kind of write a narrative around this. Like, as long as you know what you're going to spend the money on, then you can fill everything in from that. So I would write a narrative on it. And rather than like a fancy presentation with a bunch of pictures and graphics, typically yeah, I don't go yeah. that route. It would just be like a Word document that kind of does it. And I don't know if you want me to take a crack at it or if you want to do it first. But now I feel like we kind of know what we're proposing very clearly because it, it's a pretty compelling thing, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're going to take a crack at it. Okay. What I The information I don't have is like the business model. Like we're all saying that this is the one-time spend in order to get the business model up and running. So essentially, I want to understand a little bit more about that, and I'll have a little bit of a mini model around it. So yeah, I, I mean, can see, it, see what makes sense out of the core enterprise model. But the essential idea is we recruit uh, rigorously. We recruit our 24 candidates, and we start the program within six months we're up in full production. And in full production means that we're, we're building a house every two weeks. So one week we do hard work building the house, and the other week we're continuing to study. So it's a continuing education program. And you can continue in this edu and, and I would say some people are gonna be like, oh yeah, this is amazing because I can actually create my own job and earn as much as I want based on how much education I get over years. So that's gonna go at least for two years. And of course, in a greater program until four and eight at, at a deeper level. But for now, you get an opportunity to do continuing education while you ha you're getting this cross subsidized because you're building houses for, for people who that gets. Some people might want to build houses for a long time. I, I bet you a lot of people are going to want, want to go into design and management and enterprise aspects of it. And at the very end, it's uh, the eight year program. You build another campus so you build up another one of these facilities altogether. Uh, like a full-fledged let facility. Me, let me ask you a question. Um, I will read the core enterprise model, and if I write this proposal, that's it's going to take me a lot of time. I mean, not a lot of time, but like I would want to. I don't know. I'll figure it out. Do as the long industry as I can, standard. Huh? Do whatever's industry standard. Okay. Well. We're bare bones already here. <laughs> I don't want to mess with it. But let me ask you this: Do you know about the um, the uh, the crisis around pallet homes in Kansas City? I don't. What is it? So um, there. 
So every city in America has all these homeless people, and they're trying to figure out, you know, when it's cold out, it's fucking cold. They need a place to go. And so um, the city bought, I think they spent like $700,000 on pallet homes. And they're trying to find a place to put them. Where are pallet homes? Let me uh, let me show you. It's a picture of the rosebud. <laughs> so you know, they spent a lot of money on this, and if you can do it, maybe instead of not saying instead of the rosebud, but maybe if you can, if. This their goal is homelessness, right? So, two people each on in one of those. Yeah, they're they're sixty four square foot pallet shelter with cold weather mm -hmm. package. How do they heat them? See, you see them at the bottom. Yeah. Um, so they'll assemble for you. You got one 800 square foot, five 100 square foot, and 59. Uh, I guess the name is Pallet. We'll see if we can find them online. Uh, so you said 700k for what? For those units? Right, but I don't. I'm still trying to find out what's the per unit basis. Because yeah, they spent a lot of money and then they none of the neighborhoods or there are a lot of the neighborhoods it's kind of controversial you know putting like imagine putting like 200,000 of them or a, a, a hundred of them in your neighbor by your neighborhood so pa pallet oh, yeah, that will is work, the company that will work right. yeah, <laughs> yeah but, I can only imagine where they're manufactured uh, you know it's, so it's www.palletchildren.com. Amy King. So their their whole thing is, we're a social purpose company and we're we're solving homelessness. And they've got cabins in all these cities. Yeah. Thirteen. Let's see, what's the cost? The pop. Have we got any of that? I'm looking. See all. So, sixty-four. Look, they have a bathroom that's just a bathroom. So this is seven thousand. Uh, seven thousand for the the sixty four square. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah. Shelling power is fine. Air conditioning. They got an AC so heater. Four beds. Seven thousand. You double the size. At ten thousand, it's a very small. Yeah. And then, it's twice the price per square foot as the cabin. Uh, you know. Imagine, and it's it's not open source. And if one of those panels breaks, you can't go to the big box store and replace it. But yours also had a bathroom. Yeah. Right. Marching. Yeah, but we're not, we said we're not counting labor and that's <clears throat> materials. Labor is going to be 50% or so if we do it as a, unless the swarm is free labor. Yeah. Um, so it's 10K for 100 square feet. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's, that's a good, uh, that's a really good price comparison. <clears throat> I mean, 10K is good i mean i think for what they have in this it's a very basic thing there's nothing in there really i could do 
probably much better than that. Well, I'm sure we could actually, because what they're doing is is the advanced kind of construction, which is aluminum. That's more expensive right. than wood. You can do this out of wood, and it will be lower cost. Definitely lower cost. Right. Um, uh, we, when we budgeted, so we did the solar cubicles here about a decade ago. Those are 64 square feet. Uh, they're fully insulated with, I mean, it's only three and a half inch insulation. At that time, they were 400 bucks for materials, but I had nothing. It's just a shell and, and a window and a door. Yeah, no, it's interesting. I, I think... Uh, so once you know when we have when we're cranking out our panels, I think this is something that we we could do quite easily as a, a side side enterprise. Now, how much is our how much are our panels? They're what like 150, 200 a, a panel. So for for a 64 square foot house, you've got two, four, six, eight, ten of them. 10 of them times 200, 2,000. So that's a, for a shell, add 200 for a window, 200 for a door, so that's 2,400 in materials. 2,400? Yeah. I was just saying that you can tell this group is focus on the houseless, which is part of your impact. I mean, I, the eco home really isn't for a homeless person uh, to get a hundred thousand. That's kind of like a step up, but this micro home, yeah, home is more on their level. And what's happening is you have cities and nonprofits that are paying for it yeah. because they start causing a nuisance, like. I love the homeless person just as much as anybody else, but people don't, I guess when it's cold outside, they go in the buildings or, you know, things happen. So it's a big issue yeah. when it's real cold here. Yeah, so, I mean, this is one of the many offshoots that can come out of our stuff. Once we have the model, modules that we're cranking out, yeah. It, um, I mean, if you want to throw that into the proposal, this is one of the the byproducts that we're planning. I mean, we've talked about this before. I mean, we've talked about the little micro houses. In fact, part of the purpose of this, this village, the 24 homes here, is to really get that down, down pat. Yeah. So okay, so... Applicable. So you can definitely put the, the, the village, our village here, is, that's one of the offshoots of one of the spinoffs of what we're doing. So I'm going to I'm going to help write this proposal and I'll send it out maybe we can let's just I'm going to put it in the full mount and say you know look we this is our bare bones that we're trying that we're going to raise I think the intention would be to raise money from somebody and I'll tell you what I will um I think we should just say, look, if you can take off 500, you know, maybe we can find the 250 from another, somebody else or 270. Yeah, we will. And I mean, we got to do all this, so we'll have to find it. Take it, buy Ethereum, stake it, and then we'll earn it back enough to convert back and then. <laughs> <laughs> I need to I, start I, schooling myself up on crypto now. Is that what <laughs> sounds going to happen? I think that crypto marching is could be huge for you and i i think we should have a whole conversation about it because everybody there loves open source and there's stupid money flying around there's a lot of smart money flying around but there's there's money there and maybe we can take the matching and talk to gitcoin or you know I don't want to get in the way of other things that I have 
Here's, here's one, one that we could get like right now. Uh, here's, uh, take a look at this link. It's on a page called Funding on the Wiki. You know these guys? Interesting. Uh, that is by Sam Bankman Fried. You know who that is? He's a crypto guy, but apparently very successful. He, uh, he did FTX cryptocurrency exchange, and now he's funding a lot of stuff. Oh, I've recognized this guy. Yeah. Well, okay, I'll add him to the list. Once we have this written, then we can we can talk to a couple people. Yeah, sure, sure. And we should add in, you know, we don't have to take out anything, but we can add in something for uh, Jonathan and myself, right? Mm -hmm. So it's not... Yeah. Because we all, you have to get paid, I have to get paid, I mean, Jonathan has to get paid, Marchin, um, and it, I think that the crypto, but, you know, if you started a DAO, um, I have to believe that, or, or even joined up with an existing DAO, um, I'm going to think about it because I'm I even thought about making the KC DAO, Kansas City DAO. That would be the first one of the first cities. Uh and I actually have a whole kind of thought piece on it. But um Yeah, yeah it will happen someday. I don't know when. Well, now's the now's the time because just to join the DAO, you have to make it, let's say you do a philanthropic DAO, or um, I just, I'd have to think about how you would structure it, because it would be a group of people that are part of OSC, and then they would get certain rights or certain um, access. Yeah. I mean, the natural one is things like the usufruct of, like the one DAO is, once we got all this stuff happening here could be as simple as oh you get to use our micro factory and you can pop up, pop out a micro house for yourself and stuff like that so basically where people are we don't have to worry about paying them we have productive infrastructure that can address the the value generation that we create yeah so they're part of distrib distrib like we're part of the distributive economy and they have production capacity yeah they have production rights and they and they could get access to our facilities, training, equipment. Because some people, for example, they'll say, okay, you have to donate something to be a part of the DAO. It, it could be a dollar, it could be a thousand dollars. Yeah. And, um, but the story is what gets out to the media and stuff like that. And oh yeah, we can, yeah, definitely. I mean, yeah, it's, it's something to do. It's, uh, just focusing on some other things right now. Kimball Musk put in a million dollars, and within a few months, it was already at seven million for his DAO. And it just seems like people want to be a part of things. It's like the new club. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, uh... you have, but like, because you're open source, you're. Your very values align with this group of people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's absolutely true. And while like they're building, yeah, like how they feel about the banks is how you feel about the banks. You know, <laughs> I was gonna say like John Deere. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it is the banks, but you're more focused on the hardware side. They're focused on the financial side. Yeah. Yeah. So if we can make that connection in our promo video, 
Yeah, yeah, that would definitely be worthwhile. But yeah, it seems like uh, now is especially ripe time for all this kind of stuff, especially with uh, the threat to democracy and U Ukraine and stuff like that. I think there's a lot more consciousness coming about. Yeah. Yeah. I uh, I have a video team that I have. They're creating a couple of videos for me, and we could we could have them do some videos. Uh, I mean that's part of this list. But. Yeah, that would be good. I mean, on, on our side of the CD long, I've got exhaustive time lapse of the entire process. I mean, I'm still taking it, so we got a lot of good footage with the good cameras. I sent I sent them that footage because we're pitching OSE, you know, in the Blue River Valley, and so maybe it'll show up in one of the videos. Mm -hmm. I hope. Mm -hmm. Um. And you know, I'm getting the mayor's city design team wants to, you know, meet with us. So maybe I'm not sure which part of the plan they're most interested in, but um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, once we we're shown that we're delivering, I mean, this, we're not going to be short of uh, short of interest. I mean, we kind of already are. People are asking us, but you know, we just got to deliver. Just complete towards delivery. Yeah. But I mean, you could say tomorrow <coughs> the Dow thing. I guess you got to be ready and you got to do it right and you have to, you know. Well, yeah. I mean, like it's that or I either finish the house or do that and still not have a product. So, I mean, sequencing. Yeah. But is the product the micro home or the CD go home it's or both? CD go home. It's a. So you go home in the sense that while the other things like the micro houses, that's good. It's part of solving housing, but may, we're talking about mainstreamable solving of housing. That's building people for normal, building houses for normal people, and that's that would be the CD go home. And we can pitch it as okay, here's a thousand square foot starter home, but even in the lots that we want to select, we want to select for lots that you can readily expand to the two thousand square foot version, since that's kind of like. We, we can advertise definitely. Okay, here's your starter home. You can grow with it with your family and stuff. Yeah. So yeah, so main, mainstreamable product and just keeping it simple. That's yeah. Um, what was the multiplayer game? Well, I mean, that's uh, you know, like with the massive multi multiplayer online games, there are already infrastructures where you're taking things, manipulating things, and building things. That's already in, in certain video games. So if we've got our, our full CAD, you can have massive teams actually building a house, and you can have that as a competition. Who builds the house first, or build a village, or build this this bum shelter, or whatever? Like it could uh, someone just be VR? I mean, hmm? In VR or in? Well, this would be just just even a regular video game. Like you've got the shoot 'em ups. Here is a constructive shoot 'em up. I see. I thought you meant. <laughs> um, let's say someone sells a house. Hmm. I let's say on my side I can build four of these things and you got four of those things and all of a sudden like we're all we all have covered the all the components of the house. Well, if you're referring technically, to technically the house is built, but it's decentralized or distributed. But you're saying in in virtual reality? No, in real life. Like as I thought you were saying is, let's say that you want to build a house. Like let's say that I build a quarter of the house and we all do it, but we're all in different places. And then we all just show up with it, and the house is, you know, or maybe we all take it to a destination, and then it's consolidated and sold, and that's like how we all participate in the revenue of the OSC sale. No, I wasn't thinking about that that aspect. I was thinking more along the ga playing gaming, but also the education aspect. Because you can, if you have those parts in a video game environment and you're actually manipulating them, that could be your 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 training for how you actually build the things in real life. Right, that makes sense too. Jonathan hasn't said anything in a long time. John, I mean, this is a fascinating conversation, and my mind is still stuck on sh like putting the first shovel in dirt 
Yeah. Like this isn't a reflection on you guys. I'm just saying like my I was brought into this at the very beginning to think through like the how do you how do you take that first step and and operationalize this grand vision and and that's I think sort of where my head is and so I I have a lot of learning to do about DAOs and crypto and how this all connects. Well, yeah. I can no, tell I'm... you that Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. I can jam with you on crypto. I'm, to me, it's one of the few things that has given me hope. Because there's so much dysfunction in the world right now. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. Um, so I think there's a lot of opportunity in there too, you know? Um, so I hear you. Uh, we can jam on that, and I will... I'll put together probably like later this week or early next week a first draft of this and we'll send it and then we'll talk to a couple people. Yeah. As far as wrapping up on the other thing, the tech school collab, John, Mm -hmm. Yeah. write us an an apology letter. (laughs) Thanks. Sure, my pleasure. <laughs> Wait, what happened? No, I mean it's it's a great thing. I, I think this is for down the road. I think we we, we don't want to can that, but we just excuse ourselves. Let's let's get one thing at a time. It's kind of hard. You're gonna about respond, it. John? Well, I think he was well, joking, but like I I am more than happy to draft a like. Sorry, we didn't return your calls. This is the this is why, and this is what I think the future looks like. Yeah. Uh, in terms of our par- partnership, I'm, I'm more than happy to do that. Beautiful. Should we schedule something like six months from now? Not yet. No, sure. Don't worry about that. That's too far out. Well, then we won't ever forget about it, and it will actually happen. No, no, no. That's that's very well in the, in my mindscape. I won't forget about it. It's, I don't think it's the right time right now. Okay. I'm I'm adding uh, to my reminders. MCC apology letter. <laughs> Is there any questions that we need from them now, Marchin, to help you in your mindscape? No, I think I think that's okay. I, it's okay for now. I mean, yeah. Okay. Can we end on it's a, Because it's a, it's a longer discussion. It's not, I don't think you just go in there and, I think it's just a longer discussion. We don't really have the bandwidth for that right now. Okay. What's the high note? Oh, I just wanted to share that the, for the first time in two years, I had, <clears throat> I've been working with three companies, OSE and two other ones. <clears throat> for the first time in two years of doing this, one of them has reached out and said, like, we have to start paying you for what you're doing because we can't afford to, like, we, like you're basically indispensable at this point. And that's like the first time that's happened. So that's cool, right? Like, that's the first time my strategy seems to be working here which is you know it's fun congratulations man did you just find it out right now no 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 I, I found it out a couple days ago but I yeah. didn't want to cloud the discussion <clears throat> that's awesome thanks woo alright anything else we need to cover whoa whoa next meeting after Brian writes this thing down or after, after Brian, Brian. I mean, uh, I think I by, uh, yeah. by one week from today, I think I was hoping that I'm by at least worst case scenario by like Monday, I'm sending something. And so I would want to wait. Yeah. Can, Can we, we wait, wait until, until we actually hear some feedback from our customer the funder yeah oh you mean you want me to draft it and then send it no i guess i guess guess, no no probably not no after after you draft it we should take a look at it so send it over and we'll meet after that yeah and then we'll keep the comments like you know it's not going to be like i'll I'll be a, a basic explanation of you know who it is and what and then you know 
I'll, I'll just pull something off and then we'll upgrade it. Hopefully it won't be too too much and then we'll send it on. Yeah. And then we'll request a meeting. Yeah. yeah. Sounds, Sounds great. great. Okay. All right. Thank you all. All, all right. right. Thanks, Thanks all. Thank you. It's good to see you all. All right. Thanks. Bye-bye.